Good morning. Glad to be in the house this morning. Grateful for the fact that we all have mothers. <laughs> some of them good, some of them bad. But nevertheless, we were created to honor our parents, our mothers. Uh, some of us have stepmoms. Some of us have grandmoms that were more like mom moms. <laughs> And you know what? The truth is that God created them all in our life to be able to be an influence. And I'm so grateful for the mother that I have, for the mother that uh, gave me kids, my wife. Uh, I'm grateful for, for all the moms that have been in my life. Amen. And I pray that all of us are this morning. Let's pray. Lord, I love you and I thank you. I thank you for the fact that you gave us a mom, that you created in this world a mother uh, as pastor says, the ministry of mercy. And so I just thank you for the fact that the ministry of mercy was applied to my life, not only by my mom, but by the fact that Jesus Christ came to this world. He died. His blood was shed at Calvary so that an example of your mercy would be shown through mothers. And I'm so excited and grateful for the fact that I was adopted, that I understand the grace that's a given to my life by the fact that Jesus Christ came and he died on the cross. Lord, I thank you for our pastor. I just pray that as he ministers this morning, Lord, there would be a peace and a grace that would come out of his mouth that would allow even mourning mothers and mothers that have lost their children beforehand that, Lord, they would recognize and know that you love them, that there's still purpose on their life, that, Lord, now they get opportunity to mother others, that they can give their experience and their wisdom into the world that so longs for just a tender touch and that moms are so wonderful at giving. I'm grateful for the fact that I live and I serve in a church, that there's so many mothers prevalent, that there's so many willing to step up and be that for so many different ones in our house, but not only just our house, but for the very community we serve. And so, Lord, I thank you for moms. I thank you for the fact that our pastor is going to stand up here and give a word that has opportunity to change lives and change perspectives that generations down the way might be affected by the very word given today. I thank you for the grace on Josiah's life. I pray that as we worship this morning that we would remember that it's unto you and to no other reason, Lord, that we give our hearts and our souls to you. And so we lift up our hands as a praise to give you the honor that's due you. I thank you for everything you're doing in our lives. Continue to let us to be a light and salt in our community. That they would know that you are Christ by the way we live. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor David. Appreciate that. It's good work. Amen. We welcome you. We thank you for watching our HolyWild.tv. One of the things I've been thinking, this is the hardest day of the year to preach as a pastor. I'll tell you why. When you segregate a day, when you take a day and you segregate it and you say, we're going to just make this day about this person or about this group, then it uh, isolates other groups, uh, whether it be Mother's Day, whether it be Father's Day, whether we take a whole month and dedicate it to a group of people. We isolate others when we segregate one day. So it makes it a hard day because I know others who are not mothers. They, have not, they, don't have, they haven't had kids. They're like the lady Hannah. If you have your Bibles, we're going to be talking about Hannah today. Uh, I love the scripture that teaches us that they that hunger and thirst after righteousness, the right things will be filled. Hunger and thirst. When you've got a passion for Jesus, when you've got a hunger for God, Amen. When you're thirsty for the things of the Lord, I promise you, he will start to fill you. But the issue in life today is we no longer have a hunger or thirst. We're saturated. So because you're saturated with things, all of a sudden I got calls from people saying, hey, there ain't no meat in the grocery store. All of a sudden now you want some meat. You know, before it didn't bother you, but now you, you want to. I thank God I run with men and women that got lots of meat in the freezer. Hallelujah. I told a pastor this week, we got 14 deer this year. We good, man. About a quarter of a cow. We fine. But mama, we want to just celebrate you today. It is a day that we have segregated to honor you. I thank God for my mom. Hopefully you're going to let her know that there was no gift that could ever equal the gift she gave you. And of course, that is life. And it's the commonest fallacy among women is that simply having children makes one a mother, which is as, as absurd as believing that just because you got a guitar makes you a magician, a magi mus musician. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Amen. A musician. Because the truth of the matter is, uh, I would be a magician if I could take a guitar and play it. What if I, I, own, I own a guitar. I own a banjo, but that don't make me a bluegrass man. Uh, so just because you have children don't make you a father or a mother. It's learning how to father and mother children that are in your life. 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 1 tells the hunger of a woman named Hannah. You got to love this girl, man. The scripture says there once was a man who lived in, we're just going to make up some names here real quick, in Ramatha. He was descended from the old Zuth family, you know, the old Zuth family in the Ephraim Hills. His name was Elkanah. He had two wives. The first was Hannah. The second was Peniah. We'll just call her Penny for short. Penny had children. Hannah did not. Every year, this man went from his hometown up to Shiloh to worship. Every year. And he offered sacrifices. And I love how the Message Bible calls it to the God of the angel armies. Eli and his two sons, Hophni and Phinehas. Of course, Eli is the priest there in the tabernacle or the temple. His two sons, Hophni and Phinehas, served as the priest of God there. When Elkanah sacrificed, he passed helpings from the sacrifice meal along to his wife, Penny, and all the children. But he always gave especially a generous helping to Hannah because he loved her so much and because God had not given her children. He was a man who understood his wife. And as a matter of fact, the scripture says he was a polygamist, that he had two wives. And the reason for that, we believe, is because Hannah was unable to have children. And during this time period of life, they always, the men wanted to have sons. They wanted to be able to have a son to pass on his inheritance. Because he had none, he married Penny. Penny gave him children. And now Penny is not being real nice. But here's the, the funny thing about this to me. H, this week, by the way, I do have a few folk in church. And uh, next Sunday, we're going to open up church. How about that? Is that good? You clap for, for Jesus, amen, at home. We're just going to open up church here here and in New Caney. So we will be having services next week here. All right, so just going to throw that at you guys. Now you can shout on your phone, send me a message. Won't have Nursery or Children's Church next week. We hope to have it by the 24th. But Joseph and I, uh, one of our associates, we, we, uh, I, I had this desire for barbecue. Mm -hmm. And there's a place down the road called the Rusty Buckle. Hey, wake up back here. I said there's a place down the road called the Rusty Buckle. So we slid up in there to get some ribs. He, we we got to practice this a little bit. And, uh, uh, and I looked at the guy and I said, hey, man. Could you throw me some burn-ins in there? Now, if you're from Texas here, you know what burn-ins are about. That's that, that savory burnt part on the end of that, that uh, uh, what would you call brisket. Oh, and it came out with just a little bit of choice. Now, I had the ribs, and they looked good. But then they had that little box of burn-ins. Now, I've had good burn-ins. Oh, I've had some that was been, that been advertised on TV by, by that white-haired fella that's on there that's got the spiked hair up, you know. I've had those up in St. Louis. Oh, I've had good ribs and good, good burnt ends in Alabama. But this was by far the best burnt ends I ever had in my life. I put one of them, and I felt like this moment Hannah felt when, when her husband gave her the best part, and gave her a little extra, and blessed her a little bit more. And Penny might have been eating, chewing on a, on a tough rib over here, but, but Hannah was getting the choice stuff, man. I, I, I put that in my mouth. I looked over at Joseph, and I said, I don't even want to take a drink. I don't even want to wash that out of my mouth for a while. I just want to let that set there and savor. Now, if you're not from here in Texas, you don't understand barbecue. You don't know what I'm talking about. But at this moment, here at this sacrifice, Hannah got the good stuff, man. She got the good burn ends, if you would. The Scripture says in verse 6, But her rival wife, that'd be Penny, taunted her cruelly, rubbing it in and never letting her forget that God had not given her children. Oh, I'm going to tell you. People can be so mean, they can be so cruel, they can be so, they can have everything and still be jealous about what other people get in their life. She didn't even have children, and yet here at this moment, this woman, Penny, is rubbing it in, being mean to her. Verse 7 says, this went on year after year after year. Every time she went to the sanctuary of God, she could be expected to be taunted. Hannah was reduced to tears and had no appetite. Every time they went to church, this one woman sitting over there with her children, taunting Hannah, breaking her heart. The scripture says she was reduced to tears. She couldn't eat no more. She done got skinny. And the scripture says her husband, Elk, and I said, Oh, Hannah, why are you crying? Why aren't you eating? And why are you so upset? Am I not, am I not of more worth to you than ten sons? So Hannah ate. 
Then she pulled herself together, slipped away quietly, and entered the sanctuary. The priest Eli was on duty at the entrance of God's temple in the customary seat. Crushed in soul, Hannah prayed to God and cried. There's that hunger. They that hunger and thirst after right things will be filled. She hungered. She cried. She prayed. She was inconsolable. And then she made a vow. Oh, God of the angel armies, if you'll take a good hard look at my pain, if you'll quit neglecting me. Sometimes I'm telling you, we feel like our prayers hit the ceiling and come down like God ain't heard us. And she said, if you would quit neglecting me and go into action for me by giving me a son, I'll give him completely, undeservedly to you. I'll set him apart for life of holy discipline. One scripture says in one translation, he'll never get a haircut. Woo! Amen. Hannah was praying in her heart silently. Her lips moved, but no sound was heard. Eli jumped to the conclusion. You know, that's one of the worst jumps you can make is when you jump to the conclusion that she was drunk. He approached her and said, you're drunk. How long do you plan to keep this up? Sober up, woman. You in church. Quit acting drunk. See, she was praying, but she wasn't saying nothing. Her spirit was talking to God. She was hungry. She was thirsty. She'd been beat up by, by the uh, onslaught and jealousy and the envy of another woman. Amen. She had to deal with this thing in her life. And she said, don't for a minute, sir, think I'm a bad woman. It's because I'm so desperately unhappy. Uh, as a matter of fact, verse uh, let's see, well, 15 says, Please, sir, I'm a woman hard used. I haven't been drinking, not a drop of wine, beer. The only thing I've been pouring out is my heart, pouring it out to God. Don't think for a minute I'm a bad woman. It's because I'm so desperately unhappy and it's such pain that I've stayed here so long. Eli answered her, Go in peace. And may the God of Israel give you what you have asked for. In other words, the desires of your heart. May he give you the desires that you have. Think well of me and pray for me, she said. And then she went her way. Then she ate heartily and her, her face was radiant. Up before dawn, she worshiped God, returned home to Rama. Elk and I slept with Hannah, his wife, and God began making the necessary arrangements in response to what she had asked. In other words, she heard a word from the priest she believed God and then she acted on it she went home and literally fell in love with her husband again they 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 got together again she wasn't so mad about a penny she took her eyes off of this distraction here and focused on her husband and said you know what God gave me a promise I'm gonna focus on you and God's gonna bless me nine months later she had a beautiful little boy named Solomon let me tell you Penny may have had his inheritance, but Hannah was the one that had his heart. She had his, you know, Penny was secure, knew that because she had children, she had it made. But Penny had the heart of Elkanah. There's something about that. She prayed. The scripture says she was in sorrow and she was sincere. In bitterness of soul, Hannah wept much and prayed to the Lord. She, was, uh, she prayed unto him and she wept sore. I, I've often realized how powerful it is when mamas pray. My mama my mama could throw a flip-flop through two rooms and hit me in the side of the face. My mama was so good. My mama, you, I've, I've said this before. My mom loved me. She had three kids. My sister Sandy, who's gone on to be with the Lord. My little brother, who's one year younger than me, Jimmy, and then myself. But she loved me more than both of them. I know she did. And she couldn't say it. You know, mamas can't say stuff like that. But here's how I know. Every Wednesday night at 9 o'clock, every Wednesday night at 9 o'clock, Hawaii Five-O came on. da 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 Da, 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 da. And everybody else done gone to bed. My mama let me stay up, and she would whispered to me, I got you a bag of potato chips in the top corner of the cabinet up there hid just for you. She didn't do that for my brother. She didn't do it for my sister. Now, maybe, maybe something happened for them on Thursday or Tuesday. But every Wednesday, Hawaii 5 with a bag of potato chips. I just felt like a king in that little house, amen, enjoying the blessings of my mom who took care of me. But this woman, Hannah, she had no children now. She's bitter in her soul. The word bitterness means discontented. It comes from the idea of a trickle or a drop. And you can see how bitterness would enter into her life. Because year after year, this girl, Penny, had begun to put, put pressure on her and laugh at her because she's unable to have children. Her husband unable to console her. But she got into the temple. She prayed. She started believing God. In other words, this did not just happen overnight. It was like a constant drip until she became discontent. And that's how bitterness works in our life. She wanted something she knew she was supposed to have she could not receive it her barrenness was an embarrassment and a humiliation what her fault it wasn't her fault 
but she was barren, unable to have children. But she's going to do something about it. She gets in there and she starts praying. Amen. There's something about since the beginning of time when women start praying, when mama starts getting upset about stuff, when she starts getting hungry, things start changing. Jeremiah 9, chapter 9, verse 17 says, this is what the Lord Almighty says. Consider now, call for the wailing women to come. Send for the most skillful of them. Let them come quickly and well over us till our eyes overflow with tears and water streams from our eyelids. The sound of wailing is heard from Zion. How ruined we are. How great is our shame. We must leave our land because our houses are in ruins. Now, O women, hear the word of the Lord. Open your ears to the words of his mouth. Teach your daughters how to pray, how to wail, how to get after the heart of God. Teach one to uh, one another to lament. Death climbed in through our windows and has entered our fortresses. It has cut off the children from the streets and the young men from the public squares. This is not only a time for our men to pray, it's a time for mama to pray. You want to back a virus up? Get mama praying. You want to see things change in America? Get mama praying. If you want to see children straighten up, get mama praying. There's something about when a woman starts wailing. I can tell you personally, personally when the women in my life start praying and start getting after things, Things start changing around my own life. You don't always have, listen to me, you don't always have to nag a man. You don't have to uh, henpeck him. You ain't got a buzzard bite him. Sometimes, mama, you can get in your closet and pray for your husband. Amen. And ask God to change that man. You know, the truth of the matter is I can't change my wife. She can't change me. You can't change. We don't change one another. But if I can pray for you. My pastor, I, I love talking to my pastor. He, he was in a little situation with some family things. And he said it just didn't look like there was going to be any answer. And, and, and I mean, this thing had come to verbal blows within the family. And he's playing peacemaker and stuff like that. And I've seen this happen over and over. He said, and all of a sudden, two days ago, the phone rings. And there's a makeup between two women that have been at odds with one another. How did that happen? It wasn't because they stayed on one another. It's because somebody was praying. Mama, you start praying, and I know I'm putting a little pressure on you, Mom, but the Scripture even says here, Mama, teach the other girls how to pray. Amen. They're going to learn by example. They're going to watch you, and they're going to pick up on that. She continued praying. She increased in her prayer. Amen. As she continued praying before the Lord, and she prayed in her heart. Now, this may be foreign to some, because I, I like praying out loud, but in that times, I'm just praying inside my spirit. Amen. I'm just staying inside of here. Romans chapter 8 verse 26 says, Meanwhile, the moment we get tired in the waiting, God's Spirit is right along helping us along. If we don't know what or how to pray, it doesn't matter. He does our praying in and for us, making prayer out of our wordless sighs. Our aching groans. He knows us far better than we know ourselves. He knows our pregnant condition. Woo! And keeps us present before God. That's why we can be so sure that every detail in our lives of love for God is working to something good. Do you, do you realize how good we got it as believers in Christ? Hey, he did all the work for us. He died on the cross for us. He shed his blood for us. He said, all I got to do is believe it. See, I get it. And then he says, hey, if you don't know how to pray, I pray for you. Amen. I'll talk to myself through you. All you've got to do is sit here and believe that I can do it, and I can do it. I mean, it's through sighs and groans. I don't know how to pray as I ought. I struggle at times. God, I don't know. People come to me all the time, want to sit in my office and say, you got to, I don't have answers. I know somebody that does. Amen. And he's the same God that can answer you. You can go straight to him, talk to him, and he'll answer. Hannah needed a child. She needed something to change her. And she uses this phrase, if you would, God, fulfill my void that I may keep my vow. Listen, you may be married, but there are certain things your wife can't fulfill in you. There are certain things your husband can't fulfill in you. It's going to take God to fill that void. And, and there are people that think, well, just because I get connections, you know, I'll be fine. No, 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 no. We all need God to fulfill the voids in our life. 1 Samuel 1, 11, she made a vow saying, O Lord Almighty, if you will only look upon your servant's misery and remember me, remember me, and not forget your servant, but give her a son, then I will give him to you in all the days of his life, and no razor will be used on his head. Remember me. 
Because the Lord had closed her womb, the scripture says, her rival kept provoking her, provoking her. Uh, Verse 19 says, early the next morning they arose and worshiped the Lord. And they went back to their home, uh, uh, Ramah, and and Elkanah lay with his wife Hannah, and the Lord remembered her. Let me tell you, when you're praying, God remembers you. He's got you. He sees injustice. You just got to keep on praying. You know, uh, when I read the word bitterness there, I realize it's a little different than the bitterness that can make people hate. But it's a bitterness that gets inside of you that says something's got to change. I can't stay this way the rest of my life. And I love this thought. Fulfill the void in my life that I may fulfill my vow. I made a vow to you. I was, again, talking with my pastor today, and I realized that we dedicate children to the Lord based on what Hannah did. It was Hannah's idea. It, I don't read where it was God's idea. It was Hannah's idea. And she brings this little Solomon into the temple and gives him to Eli that he would be raised up in the temple. Amen. That's where he would be. They may not recognize you down here, but I'm going to promise you, God will never forget you up there. I love this woman's hunger. 1 Samuel 2, 1, in the message says, Hannah prayed. She prayed. When she found out she's pregnant, she says, I'm bursting with God news. Not good news, but God news. I'm walking on air. I'm laughing at my rivals. I'm dancing with my salvation. You know, prayer and praise are two wings of a believer's life. They balance your walk out. We have a prayer here meeting on Tuesday nights now at 7.30, Jay. Uh, I say 7 o'clock. Amen. Prayer meeting here in our Crosby campus. Love to have you here. But here it is. They balance your walk. Prayer is when you need help. Pray. James says, in James 5, verse 13, is any one of you in trouble? If you in trouble, you should pray. Is anyone happy? Let him sing songs of praise. Here's both of them right there, prayer and praise. Amen. If you're in trouble, you need to be praying. And this woman, she was in a little bit of trouble. She said, I'm going to pray. And God blessed her womb. And she had a child, of course. And then she begins to rejoice and praise. She says, my heart rejoices. I'm bursting with God news. Many would sing if they could keep their son. Hannah sang because she could give him up. Many sang because I, I, for many years, you know, I'm the father of three adopted children. And I learned a long time ago that kids are our privilege and not our possession. And I, I, sometimes I'll even look at them. Now they're all in their 20s and up. And I say, you know what? You're my privilege. You ain't my possession. You don't belong to me no more. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, you never belong to me. You belong to God. Amen. God take care of you. But the bottom line is that. Well, they, we just get the opportunity to hold them, to be guardians of them, to care for them. But there's going to come a day they have to make a lot of their own decisions. Amen. First Samuel, and I'll start closing with this, chapter 2. But Samuel was ministering before the Lord. Samuel, that little boy. I, I dearly wish, pray, hope. That all of us at one time or another will experience knowing that one of our children, one of our God children, one that we've been guardian over, that they have just a semblance of Samuel. Samuel was brought up in a temple. Can I tell you? Samuel was brought up around Hophni and Phinehas, the sons of Eli. Eli is a picture of a backslid religion of the Old Testament. Matter of fact, when Eli died, He was so heavy in weight that he flipped over backwards in his chair and snapped his neck. It shows us that religion can't help you. Hophni and Phinehas were wicked boys. And this boy, Samuel, comes up in their life and stays right with God. Has a tender heart toward God. You say, Pastor, who is Samuel? Samuel is the guy that God spoke to and said, I found a man who's after my heart. And he's speaking of a little red-headed boy named David, who later becomes king. He told Samuel about David before David was ever born. He said, I found a man after my own heart, which tells me that God saw you before you got in your mother's womb and got here on this earth. Amen. He had a plan for you. He had had a position for you. He had a purpose for you to fulfill, just like Samuel. Samuel, first he anointed Saul as king. And then God told him, I'm taking the anointing from Saul. And I'm sending in another one. And later it was him that went in to Jesse's house and saw all the boys. And then anointed the king, David. Samuel was a a man of tremendous wisdom. But you know what his mama did for him? 
Every year, Mama brought him a bag of potato chips. Woo! Every year, Mama brought him a brand new coat. As that boy began to grow, she'd make him a coat and bring him a coat. Look here again. Each year, his mother made him a little robe and took it to him. When she went up with her husband to offer the annual sacrifice. Ooh, Sam, I see him coming in with that robe. Uh-huh. Every year. I see him when he get about 15, 16 years old. She brought him one with the Crimson Tide Alabama. You know, I mean, uh-huh. You know, the winning team. Man. She, she'd bring him all kind of robes in, you know. And every year he had a different robe. He'd hang them up. As he grew up, he'd see them robes. They'd go all the way back. Some of you found clothes back when you were young. You realized, I can't believe I fit in those. She loved that boy like that. Eli would bless Elkanah and his wife, saying, May the Lord give you children by this woman to take the place of the one she prayed for and gave to the Lord. Then they would go home. And the Lord was gracious to Hannah. Watch this. She conceived and gave birth to one, two, three sons, two daughters. Meanwhile, the boy Samuel grew up in the presence of the Lord. God gave her five children. And you understand the number five in the Word of God is grace. God said, I'm going to give this woman grace. I'm going to bless this woman. Do you know what? I kept reading. I can't find Penny anywhere else in the Bible. You know, if you provoke, if you mean, if you nasty, if you envious, if you jealous, it won't be long. Your history will be just faded away. But this woman, Hannah, she kept a right spirit. She went to the church and prayed. She asked God to change her situation. She made a vow that God would fill her void. And in so doing, she got five kids. She got six kids in all, but five now at home. Mom, you didn't give birth. You didn't adopt a son or a daughter. You're nurturing a deliverer, a Samuel, a Ruth, a Moses. You may never know. You may never know. You know, I promise you, my mama had no idea I'd turn out the way I did. (laughs) She probably wished I might have turned out a little different. And I'm by no means perfect, mature. I'm just growing in God. But I can promise you this. If you are hungry after God, heaven hears you. Heaven hears you. He will fill the voids in your life. You know, there was a, a maker of 57 varieties, ketchup man. His name was Henry Hines. When they asked Henry Hines, who was a multi, multi-millionaire, about the favor on his life, he said that his legacy was left to him by his consecrated mother, a woman of strong faith. And to it, I attribute, attribute any success I have attained. Mama, we want to thank you for the successes that we have attained. You prayed with us. You took care of our our bobos. You wiped away our tears. You hugged us through hard, stormy nights. You told us it was all going to be all right. Mama, we salute you today. We thank you for your blessing. We thank you for your striving. And I pray that God will fulfill the voids in your life, even now. Amen. And he'll fulfill them. And those that still are struggling with motherhood, hey, listen, when you get children, you don't get a book telling you how to raise them. It's trial and error. And sometimes after two, three, four, five kids, it's still trial and error because every one of them is different. But we thank you, Mom. We salute you today. We love you, Mom. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Again, next week, we will have church here starting at 830. We will have church in New Caney starting at 1030. It's time for us to kind of move forward here and realize that uh, we can't wait on other decision makers to make those. Amen. We're going to press into it. But I want to say this to you. First off, the two things I'm going to reiterate over and over. First, I'm not afraid of you. 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 I'm not afraid to be around you. I'm not afraid to embrace you, shake your hand, give you a shoulder bump, knuckle bump, whatever. I'm not afraid. Second, I want you to know 
that if anything happens to me, it's not your fault. Because one of the things that our governments and uh, the news media have said over and over again is that if I make you sick, it's my fault. I disagree with that. I disagree totally with that. I've, I've had the flu before, and I never traced back who gave me the flu. I was born with muscular dystrophy, and I never once back looked at my mother and said, Mom, it's your fault that I've had surgeries on my... I won't do that. It's life, my friend. I have taught men and women how to ride motorcycles. My whole life, I've been riding since I was 12 years old. I'm heading out tomorrow for the hill country. People have learned how, my associates are learning how to ride motorcycles because of me. I've done funerals of friends that I helped them learn how to ride a bike. I visited them in the hospital, but it wasn't my fault. They made a decision that they wanted to ride. And I'm making a decision that if you're around me and I get sick, it ain't your fault. We got to start changing the narrative. We got to shift this thing around, man. We got to believe God. You know, again, we listen to a lot of, of uh, unbelieving God haters in our government telling us and giving us, I ain't doing that no more. I'm standing on the word of God and the blood of Jesus. Amen. So I hope to see you next week at 830. And again, if it's going to take you a little time, I understand that. I understand. I understand we're coming out of this, and that we got to shake off all the things we've heard. We've got to believe God for the best, and then we're going to accept the verdict. Amen. Now, right now, I pray that you're preparing to give on your phone or on your iPad or computer. Amen. That you've learned to give online. We're seeing that over and over again. So you know that there's a, a place for you to give. You can give it. Uh, you can send it to the office. Some have done that to 22152 Baptist Encampment Road in New Caney. You can see it on our website. You can give online. You can give through the app. You can give several ways there, right, Cheryl? I think that's one of the, the uh, slides there. You can do that. We want to thank you for, your mercies, for the mercies of God in your life. And I want to say this with you as you're giving today. Get to that as we're giving, Miss Cheryl. Guys, i got a great staff here. You know, people have been so faithful. This is seven weeks that we've done this. And people have showed up to make sure we're able to do this. So I want to declare this with you. You say, Pastor, I lost my job. Well, I'm asking God to give you a better job. I'm asking God to give you a better job. But you got to seek for it. You got to believe for it. I'm praying you get more money in less hours. Benefits, sales, and commissions. That you're going to get checks showing up in the mail. Amen. Gifts and surprises are going to run over you. You're going to find money. You, be, you hit it up somewhere and forgot where it was. Bills are going to get paid off. Settlements, inheritance, rebates and returns, debts demolished, royalties received, amen. Favor to fall, favor to run over you, my friend. Hallelujah. And success to you and success to the kingdom of God. Amen. Love you. Am I off the air now? Well, you got to.